all the unique characters. I do let them bang. Yeah, I say, like, yeah, I'm a legend, man. I'm building my legs. All the stories and perspectives featured weekly. I wasn't fully committed to that choke, and I kind of sunk into it, started squeezing tighter, and I kind of heard him gurgle a little bit. I was like, oh. And all the combat sports you could ask for in the best state in the U.S. Like I said, Ohio versus the world. It's going to happen for sure. Watch out. It'll be cool, man. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to show them why the Ohio MMA scene is, in my opinion, one of the best MMA scenes in the country. This is Forged in OH. IO. OH. IO. OH. IO. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 93 of Forged in Ohio. My name is Jake Murrin, and I'm the host of the podcast. In 92 episodes of Forged in Ohio, I'd say it's fairly rare for me to say that it's long overdue to have a fighter on the show. I featured a lot of athletes, and believe me, there are still some guys who I followed from the very start, but I haven't had the opportunity to talk with them here on Forged in Ohio. And I bring this up because I feel that way with the guests joining me today For episode 93, he made his pro debut at Cage Thunder 28 fight night in the flats and won with a very impressive knockout in the second round. Representing Wolverine style MMA, it's Nick Jaws Walls. Thanks for coming on the show, Nick, and welcome to Forged in Ohio. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Long time coming. Yeah, that it was. Thank you for coming on the show. Let's kick things off the only way we should your pro MMA debut win at Cage Thunder 28 fight night in the flats. Before we get into some of the details of the fight itself, what was it like competing in such an iconic fight venue for your pro MMA debut on such a big card there in the flats? Man, it was it was absolutely awesome. I mean, it's it's everything I've always like imagined for myself. To be quite honest, I used to be that ten year old kid with my tap out trunks on, putting on music like it was my walkout intro, and I would just you know I'd I've manifested this for for a long time. You know, it was awesome. <laughs> Has it hit you that you know like a few weeks after the debut win that you are a pro athlete, you are a one and oh pro mixed martial artist? Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it honestly took a minute to sink in. I mean, people from my hometown, people from Ritman, they, you know, you don't see a whole lot of professional athletes or anything of that coming out of there. So, so it's pretty cool. It's unique from where I, I've come from. So it's definitely special. Well, it was your first pro fight and your opponent, Darnell Truitt, threw a head kick in like the first five seconds of the first round. Do you like that you're not restricted anymore with, you know, those weapons that you can use that you're a pro fighter? Oh, I really do. And I mean, I fully expected that. Like, uh, I did a lot of sparring with, with my buddy, Chris Porter, and he was, he throws head kicks at me like crazy. So I'm, I'm so used to it, you know? What did fight day look like for you since, you know, you didn't have to worry about weighing in early on Saturday morning for same day weigh-ins. What did that look like for you as you're prepped for the pro debut? Um, I mean, (laughs) It was, a, it was a lot more laid back and relaxed. It was it was more professional, you know. I, I felt like a professional. Uh, it, it was cool that, to not have to be, you know, just jumping through hoops the day of the fight and dealing with that fatigue. I really, I really feel that was everything for me in there, like my my conditioning and just just everything. I, those same day weigh ins at one fifty five are are hard for me. That's why I've taken a few at one seventy. So it was it was much nicer. I, I'm going to stay at 55, that's for sure. Yeah, with that process, now that you're a pro fighter, is it safe to say that that's the best version we've seen of Nick Walls in in your pro MMA debut? Uh, yeah, definitely. Even just my physique, like I was so much, uh, I was less sunken in and I just felt so much better. Like between rounds, I was just, I felt great, you know. Usually I put all the hard work in and then zap myself with a weight cut and it, feels like I didn't even train for the fight when I'm in the fight so it was it was such a such a good feeling in there so relaxed I mentioned your opponent Darnell Truitt did he present a unique challenge to you obviously you put him away in the second round but throughout the fight he was throwing a variety of strikes to the head body and legs especially early on in in the first round to get the fight going 
Yeah, I mean, he he looked really good. He was throwing good combinations. He was changing the levels of his strikes. He was attacking the the head, the legs, the body. He, he was doing everything he's supposed to do. It's just I've seen that style so much, and, you know, not to take anything away from him or anything, but that fight, it literally went exactly how I was – telling people i i told everyone when they asked me i said he, he'll come out fast he'll he'll bring it you know he'll come out throw good combinations and good kicks and i i just you know a, after after you see that so much it's it, it's just a, a recipe for for disaster when when i'm fighting my fight you know Rewatching the fight myself it looked like you landed a good right hand halfway into the first round you kind of pointed at him and really settled in is that when you felt that this was your fight and it was yours to lose it per se um you know honestly from the moment i got in there <laughs> it's funny because he didn't touch gloves with me like i raised my hand up and he said no and from that moment i just like it's like a mental thing where I was like, oh, okay. All right. He's, he's thinking about this differently than I do. Like this is, this is competition. This is, I'm thinking like X's and O's in there and he's in there worrying about, oh, I got to be tough and not touch gloves and all this. And I'm like, okay, that already, that right there in my head, I was like, okay, perfect. This is my fight. You know, it's statistically, I, it's some crazy statistic that guys that refuse to touch gloves usually lose. So I was like, Oh great. That's on my side too. <laughs> well, there you go, man. Are you someone that always looks to touch gloves before rounds and in fights? Yeah. Yeah. Usually I, I, I do. Yeah. That's uh that's kind of just my character behind it. I've been in way worse situations and fighting one man in a cage that, you know, you got gloves on and I've been in way harder situations than that in life. So that's, uh, that's, that's the fun part, you know. You mentioned feeling good in between rounds. How did you digest what happened in the first round when you went to your corner? And what did they tell you between rounds on the stool? So, um, like, you can tell in the fight, like, yeah, he came out and, like, landing more. and But I really didn't take a step back. I was walking him down the whole time and putting the pressure on him. And I could see it in his face. Like, I could just see him kind of wilting even – when he would land, he was kind of moving backwards. And so I, I recognized that early and I could see him, I could see him kind of wilting. I could see in his face, I'd land a jab or I'd land a hard leg kick. There was just something about him that, that you could see him kind of breaking. Maybe I'm wrong, but I felt that like mentally for me, I felt him wilting in there. So in the second round, I was like, Oh, and then I took a deep breath and I was fine and I wasn't all worked up and I was like, Oh, okay. Got to sit on the stool. It wasn't even breathing heavy. I was like, okay, this is my fight, you know? Yeah, for sure. I'm sure you were confident going into the fight, but when you're picking up on those things during the fight and maybe they were, or were not the case, but in your head, you know, you are confident that that's the case. That's how it. much does that mean yeah. to you during the fight? And how much does that boost your confidence while you're in there? So that's always, that's been a thing my whole career. Like, uh, I'm so confident, but I also, maybe it was like my conditioning or my weight cut or whatever it was, but like I would spiral so quickly in there to where if something went wrong, I'd tense up and I just like would watch it unfold and I'd spiral in my head. And I've been so conscious of not letting that happen in my, in my fight camp and continually putting myself in those hard, just terrible situations where my body wants to quit. And so I've pushed myself through that countless times, especially this past camp. And so I just, I just felt ready for anything, man. I just, uh, nothing could hurt me in there, you know? Yeah, talking about how you were feeling between rounds, did you kind of sense that a finish would be near and would be available to you in round two? Yeah, yeah. In in my corner, like Cody, having Cody there right, and, and Chris and just guys yelling, they're, they're real good fight IQ guys and, and they know what they're talking about. They know what they see. So hearing their advice and it's lining up with what I'm seeing in, in my head. So everything was aligned and I was like, Oh, okay. Like it was just a matter of time. We're, we're all saying and thinking the same things because they know how I fight. So, and, it, and it's just so great that everybody before the fight is like, Oh, you, you probably want to grapple him. You know, they, they're like, he's, he's, you know, if you stand at range and kickbox with him, it's, it's going to be a tough night. You, you want to go in there and stick to a game plan and grapple him. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, I know I can grapple and I work on it a lot, but they they just haven't seen me 
how I fight. That's my element right there, standing at range and in playing the game, you know. Did it feel good to silence those doubters or that audience that thought, hey, your best path to victory would be on the ground, and you went out there and showed that, hey, you have what it takes to compete with him on the feet? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and it was nice that it only was on the feet because – I just keep improving everywhere, and I can't wait to show those aspects when, when the time comes. Maybe I'll out-wrestle a wrestler next fight. We'll see what happens. There you go, man. It looked like it was a left hook followed by a right hand that finished your opponent. Can you walk me through that yep. finishing sequence a minute and 46 seconds into the second round? So right before that little exchange, I, uh, I, I started landing the jab. He threw a jab to my body, and I kind of looked at him. And then he went to throw it to my body again, and I hit him with a stiff jab to, right in the face. And that's why I, I kind of was seeing it. it looked like his eyes were kind of like rolling or or something. So I and and then he wasn't really reacting to it. So I jabbed him like four more times in the face, and he he didn't even move. You know, he was just eating it. So I was like, oh, he's a little rattled. Then I kind of rushed him. I almost rushed him and took him down. And I had to like stop myself. And I was like, in my head, I'm like, no, dude, like, don't do this again. You don't need to take him down. And we we spun off the cage. And at that point, he was bleeding pretty bad. And I could, it's it's crazy because like when I smell the blood, it's funny because the the Jaws nickname and everything. But once I smell the blood, it, it's like, it, I don't know. It I couldn't be tired in there. Like I couldn't be. I I just get after him, you know. And and I started seeing that shot. Like I I threw a jab, and he kind of leaned. And then I threw a hard left hook because I saw him like kind of try to parry the jab. So I just threw a hard left hook and, and landed clean with it. Then the the final little uh, exchange, I went to like I was throwing the hook. But if you actually watch, I grab. I don't I don't throw the the first one's not a hook. I kind of grab his his right hand and then I throw the uppercut. the The plan was to hit him with the hook after the uppercut, but he was already going down from the uppercut. So so yeah, so I kind of kind of grab and I set that little. That little exchange up, and luckily it worked worked perfectly. And I, I can't wait for uh, like Alexa and some of the guys that were filming in my corner. They they said they got the audio of of Cody yelling the exact combination that I throw right before I throw it. So that'll be a cool little uh, little piece there. Oh yeah, that's very cool. I can't wait to see that circulate on social media when it's out. It wouldn't be a, a, a Nick Wall's pro debut without some bloodshed, though, right? That's right. That's right. Your your coach, Cody, the Wolverine Stevens, you mentioned him multiple times already. He wrote on social media that it was great to see you feel so free on fight night and the growth during training camp was on full display. Do you feel the same way that you're able to fight freely and showcase your skills in the cage? Yeah, I, I truly do. Like, I don't know. I feel like I've gone through some some kind of transformation, whether it's it's like obviously physically spiritually i don't know man it this camp i i really really went all in on it and spent a lot of time away from my wife and kids and yeah, that part really sucked but at the same time that's that's why I, I was feeling how i was i did i felt free in there i've been praying more i've been been really going the route to to just be a better person and it's uh it's really been working out for me i've seen the seen the results it sounds cliche and corny for for a lot of people but it's changed my life truly yeah i love that that transition you're making your pro debut you're making that transition but you're also changing a lot about who you are and how you prepare as a pro fighter is there one thing in particular that you credit most for that transition and who you are now or is it a multitude of different things to where you are now as a one and pro fighter I think it's a multitude of different things. I I really think it's just uh, even taking fighting separate from it all. Just my my mentality towards life, uh, my mentality towards being a father, towards being present. You know, uh, my job gives me purpose, and just having purpose. You know, I used to go out there and I would do well because I had that I I don't care attitude like whatever happens happens and now it's like i care about everything i i i care too much to to the point where it's uh it's forcing me to do the right things you know it's it's putting the pressure on me when no one's looking i'm able to put myself through workouts that i could have never put myself through i'd have to have cody you know yelling down my throat 
which is great. I mean, he's, he's the best for that. But now that I've learned and I can, I can put myself through those hard situations by myself and that's everything to me that built my confidence so much being able to do that and, and knowing how in shape I was and, and all that. So. Yeah. I love that mindset and, you know, finding your purpose you mentioned. And I feel like that's the mindset that will take you far in whatever it might be. It just so happens that you're pursuing this pro mixed martial arts career. Do you agree that that's the mindset now that you have, and you can take that pretty damn far in this game? Yeah, 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 definitely. And it's like, it's just being open and not being not being stubborn and and ignorant to it, knowing what you have to work on. Like if you're if you're not working on one aspect of mixed martial arts, you're gonna lose that way. Period. Like it's just, I've lost some. I've won some. I've lost every way possible. I've won every way possible besides decision. Um, I don't really got finishes on my wins, but uh, I mean, you know, you go through those experiences, and it's like that too, Cody tries to teach me stuff that he was never taught. And I try to teach the younger guys stuff that I think is helpful that I was never told that I've learned from experience. And that's why martial arts evolves and grows so quickly more than any other sport, I think, is because people are so willing to share their knowledge. They're, they're willing to, to build each other in this. And that's why it's such a beautiful thing. I, I really do. I think that's why it, it has grown so much faster is, is the ability to, share knowledge and and help each other what does it mean to you to be the first athlete at wolverine style mma under cody the wolverine stevens to earn their first professional victory Mm, it's it's awesome man it just from where where we started and where when i started going there it was so low-key and we've built it up to where you know in just a short amount of time i've watched i've watched kids come in there that we're emotionally fragile and we're getting picked on their 15, 16. And I've watched them grow into like, they're giving me hard rounds and they're 17, 18, watch their whole confidence and mentality change. And like that firsthand shows me how beautiful martial arts is. And that's not even to speak on myself. Like I've grown so much where people don't even, don't even know, like I, I'm more private than a lot of other people, but but I've grown so much just like the younger guys and just to watch all that at the gym, it's, it's beautiful. Like, so, so to be the first pro athlete out of that gym is it's everything to, to give those guys an, an inspiration and, and all that. That's, that's everything to me, man. Talking with Nick Jaws walls on Forged in Ohio overall, what were the emotions like after the win at cage thunder 28, we saw a glimpse of them inside the cage and your reaction to the knockout, but I'm assuming you were on cloud nine all night. Oh yeah. I'm um, honestly, and I said in the back, I'm, I was relieved. I try to be, that's another part of this journey is I try to be so brutally honest that it, it's undeniable. You know, I, I, people ask me how, how are you feeling? Are the stages so big? Like, yeah, of course I'm nervous. Of course I'm nervous, but what, why else would I do this? I mean, I want to fight on the biggest stage possible. I mean, I can't be scared <laughs> to do that. So it's like, yeah, of course we all have nerves. We all have fear, but I mean, <laughs> you can, you don't have to be brave. You just have to act brave. That's what I always tell, tell the guys too. You don't got to be brave. You got to act brave. I know everyone's scared in there. So, I mean, if I can be less scared and fight my fight, then I have the best chance of winning. So after, I mean, after the fight, I was relieved. I, I was relieved that it worked out how I knew it could. I've always been wanting to show that aspect of, of my game. To, that I mean, that's how I started is those stand-up fights, those exchanges. That's, that's what I do. I, I'm not really looking to grapple too much. It's just kind of happened that way to where now that's a big part of my arsenal. So it was it was a relief honestly and, and th- that it all worked out I, I marketed the fight well I sold a lot of tickets my grandma was there you know so I'm just I was relieved that it worked out when did you learn that or have that mindset of hey being just brutally honest because a lot of fighters might not admit that they're as scared going to the cage but you mentioned how being brave is most important did you enter this game with that mindset or if not like where where did you learn that that important lesson? Uh, that's, that's a tough one. Yeah. Uh, I, I think just along the lines of 
so like I said, you know, I've taken the losses. I've, I've prepared right. I've prepared wrong. And there's always excuses. There's always something to say. It's easy to be dishonest with yourself when, when those things are happening. Like, oh, I, oh, my weight cut, oh, my, my conditioning. Oh, you know, there can always be something to point it to. But you just start like diligently knocking those things off to where there's no excuses and no stone unturned. And you can't, you can't lie. You can't lie to yourself. If you lie to yourself, man, good luck. Good luck accomplishing very much, you know? So I've always just kind of been been in that way. I I preach this to everybody too. Like, like it feels good to be good. It feels good to be a good person. You, You can do it selfishly and still, and still be a good person. Sometimes I think that's the case with me. I'm good to other people. So I feel good about myself, but isn't that better than treating other people bad to feel good about yourself? So it's like, just, it feels good to be good. feels good to be truthful. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I hope my kids can see that. And, and that's the most important thing is my kids get to see their dad pursue their dream through anything, you know, through the ups and downs. It's hard, but not enough kids today have a real dream. They want to be like, just a YouTuber or something like that, you know, and then that's it. And then you ask them, what do you want to do? And they're like, I don't know. <laughs> I just want to be on YouTube or something. <laughs> but, but yeah, so, so yeah, just having, just being honest with yourself, man, I've always, I've always tried to be that way, but with maturity and, and just growing in life, I think I've kind of built, built that mentality. It feels good to tell the truth and you got nothing to lose that way. Yeah, I love everything you just said there, and what a great message for the Forge in Ohio listeners and viewers as well. So you had 13 amateur fights with a 7-6 and six amateur record. How did having such a long amateur career prepare you to turn pro like you did in August? Well, I was chomping at the bit to turn pro. Like I wanted to, I wanted to beat Antonelli and turn pro. That was my that was my goal is to to get that belt and turn pro, and then. That I lost that split decision to him, and I just kind of uh, like I knew I had to, I had more work to do. Cody Cody is like he's I mean I have to I have to listen to him. Anytime I listen to that guy, I I find success. So uh, it it was uh, our choice to take a take another fight and a couple more fights actually, and it ended up being Alonzo Turner, which probably wasn't the greatest like choice on a short notice up a weight class and all of that. But, uh, but I mean, that's what we do this for. You know, when I see that number one in the Midwest by their name, like I want to fight that guy every time, you know, on a one day notice and not enough people have that mentality, but you know, it kind of, uh, that was a big thing for me because I fought fears for that too. You know, that, that made me nervous. You know, he's a, He's a good fighter, a big, strong guy. And fighting those fears, I knew I'm not going to face that again, probably, especially at 155. And and so uh, turning pro after that, well, I, I fought uh, Liggett after that and uh, had, a, had a good win because I think that's a stipulation of how you can't turn pro coming off a loss. So I had to get that one more win and uh, had to get out there and do it. So I wanted to turn pro a few fights before but I'm very thankful that I did it because I, I grew a lot. The, the last two camps I had were the, the, the most growth I've had in the camp. So, so thankful. When you, when you look at like the rankings and you see that number one in the Midwest and you're trying to fight that guy and you, you crave that type of competition, is it safe to say that that's going to translate now that you're a pro fighter, you're going to be looking at those rankings and chopping at the bit to fight the guys that can get you to the next yeah. level. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, taking a guy with seven fights in my first pro fight was, uh, I knew that in which I'm, I'm going to be more calculated as a professional just because, you know, money's on the line. I'm taking more time from my family. It's, it's more professional now. So I do have to be a little more, I don't want to say choosy because that's, that's really not it. Like, like smart. I don't know. I don't need to be taking the Alonzo Turner fights anymore, you know, but, but, yeah, I don't know. It it'll translate. I I know there's there's some work I gotta do. I gotta knock some guys off and just just keep climbing, keep getting wins. That's my goal. Just keep finishing people and getting wins and 
and uh, you know it'll be undeniable. Make yourself undeniable. Did all that amateur experience too give you the confidence to make that next step in your career and make the pro debut at KH Thunder Twenty Eight? Yeah, definitely. Because, like I said, I, I've seen it all. I've I've seen every style. Every I fought Elijah Humes when he was the number one ranked guy in the Midwest. I'm pretty sure at, for for a belt at Ohio Combat League, and I thought he was going to kickbox me. He came out and wrestled me the whole time. So that really like uh, that opened my eyes. You know, it's like made me be more well rounded. It, all those fights like that just just grew me so much, and. Uh, it, it made me realize I have to take things seriously. Like I went into the Devin Rhodes fight. I, I didn't take it as I wasn't game planning. I wasn't, I wasn't watching his fights. I knew, I knew he had a spinning back fist, but the way like my style was, if I would have done my homework, I would have realized that, that I can't bite on the first, the first miss, you know, I can't counter off the first shot, things like that. Or I need to have my hands up and just, just things like that where, where taking those fights did grow, grow me into the the part where I'm not, I'm not worried. Like I've, I've seen it all, you know, nobody's going to throw anything crazy at me. I haven't seen. What does it say about you as a fighter that all of your wins, seven amateur wins, now a pro win have all come inside the distance? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it goes along with what the, the nickname too. It's like, blood in the water man i'm i'm just coming after him i want to be exciting i want to get the finish i truly feel like i got a thousand ways to finish the fight playing through my head it's just choosing the right one in the right moment that's why people ask me all the time like oh are you more of a a striker or you're a grappler I, i always say i'm an adapter i i adapt to the situation i can strike i can grapple i can even wrestle a little bit now I, I can play off my back. I, I have good top control. So it's like wherever the fight goes, I'm going to adapt. If I, if I have a guy that I can take down easily, that's swinging wild, uh, I'll be better bet. I'm going to take him down. If I got a guy, if I got a guy that's going to stand at range with me like Darnell and, and play the game, that that's my favorite, but we'll do that. You know, we'll, we'll kickbox. So I just adapting, you know, it's just, just got to stay adapting throughout the, the whole career. You know, it never ends. Has that process become easier for you now that you're 14 fights in being able to adapt and thinking, okay, I have potentially four ways of finishing this fight, but while I'm in the cage during the fight, picking the best route to be able to actually do so. Yeah. Sometimes less is more. That's what I realized in, in like, like just this past fight. I mean, I won the fight with jabs, leg, kicks and then it set up a big shot feints those are all just fundamental techniques that that we we've gone over and it's it's less about focusing on your opponent yeah i've watched them fight i've actually sparred them before back in the day but uh it's less about watching them and what they're doing and making sure that i'm ready and i'm you know touched up on all parts of my game and i'm in the best shape i could possibly be I mean, the only time I'm thinking about him is when I'm like, damn, I know he's not working this hard. You know, that's what I'm thinking about him. Like, he ain't doing this. So that motivates me to keep keep working harder. Once again, this is Nick Jaws Walls on Forged in Ohio. Making the pro debut at 30 years old, do you feel like you need to stay active now to ensure that you can achieve some of those goals that you might be trying to achieve as a mixed martial artist? Yeah, I truly do. I truly do. At, at 30, you know, I mean, you, you hear everybody talk that if I, you know, 30s old to be making your pro debut, whatever, whatever. But I figure if I can maybe get another win by the end of the year, put three more together next year, you know, just keep just keep winning and keep finishing people. And, you know, hopefully it'll be undeniable. If not, I'm just going to keep going and keep finishing people, keep knocking them out, whatever I have to do. So. It is what it is. It, I mean, I truly love it. It's truly my my way of life. So, like, I was born to do this. Anybody that's grown up with me or knows me knows that this is pretty much my my calling since I was a little kid. And uh, so, so yeah, I'm not. I'm never stopping. But it would have to take something terrible to happen for me to stop. What are some of those goals that you're working towards in your career? Honestly, that that's truly it. Like, I just want to keep winning and showing 
you know, that's probably the best answer I could give is showing, showing myself in the cage, showing who I really am. I mean, getting my message across because I think, I think people could benefit from, from hearing some of the stuff that I have to say. I mean, it's kind of my job to do that at, at the school and stuff like that and, and guide, guide some of the troubled youth that they go to uh, my school. And, but honestly, that's, that's really it. Just, just keep, keep, keep the dream alive, man. Don't, don't let life break you. Like that's, that's my goal. I want, I want people to see my message in that way and just keep winning fights. When it comes to keeping that dream alive, what are things in life that motivate you and drive you to get to where you want to be? Um, obviously my kid, my three kids and my wife, like they're, they're the biggest thing. Like they started this with me and I mean, my, my wife's been, been everything she you know she she does everything she she's a stay-at-home mom and she cooks cooks meals and she just does she does everything i need you know she, she holds it down for me and just to uh for her and my my kids and just my whole family my friends that watch this this journey growing up they've seen me in countless fights and uh my grandfather he, he passed away he's one of the strongest men i ever knew he he took so much pride in the fact that I did this and uh, just, just think of the family, really. Like, I, I just want to make them proud. I want to leave a mark. I want, I want to be remembered, you know, but we all do. Right. Yeah. And I couldn't, couldn't think of a better way of showing that than in your pro MMA debut going one to know now that you are a pro fighter and being undefeated at that. Is there a chance that fight fans get to see you before the end of the year or is 2025 more likely in your mind? Um. So I know that Cage Thunder's looking at going back to this, the Canton Civic Center around December. So uh, that that's a good timetable for me to to possibly get in there before before the end of the year. So that that might be the one, you know. Start looking at opponents, looking at looking at getting back in the uh, back in the swing of things. All right, man. Well, I'd love to see you in that cage for cage thunder at uh, the Canton civic center in December before we wrap up, just anything you want to shout out here at the back end of the show. I'll, I'll give you the floor. Well, uh, um, everybody at, uh, everybody at Wolverine, I mean, has helped me like tremendously. Like Cody was so, so diligent at helping me this, this camp and designing things that, that fit, that fit for my style of opponent and the he we've been together so long that he knows exactly what I need to work on with my strength and conditioning and things like that. So I just have to thank Cody for everything. Cody, uh, his wife, Melissa, she, she's a genius. She, she knows how the body works more than probably anybody I know. And uh, I just got the best team around me, strong style for letting me come up there and get rounds in and, Everybody up there is great and helpful and um, yeah, yeah, just the family, the sponsors, all that stuff. So on to the next one. All right. Well, there you have it. Thanks again, Nick, for coming on the show. It was great to finally feature you on Forge in Ohio. And there's no doubt that you're incredibly talented and undeniable, as you said. Before I let you go, a staple of this show is the OHIO chant to wrap up these conversations. So if you could help me out here, OH. I-O. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate the, t- the time. Congrats on the pro debut win in the flats, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's next for you and the team. I appreciate it. Thank you. That was Nick Walls Jaws, the 1-0 professional mixed martial artist. When it comes to showing out in your pro MMA debut, I don't think Nick Walls could have done any better. He looked great out there, turning all that valuable experience as an amateur into a solid pro debut performance. Nick made a statement with that win, and I can't wait to see which lightweight stands across from him next inside the cage. We're on a decent run now with Forge in Ohio, churning our way to 100 episodes. I have a few more guests lined up, but as always, you can follow and reach out to the show on Instagram and Facebook at Forged in Ohio with any guest suggestions. Don't forget to download episodes while you're listening on your favorite podcast platform or if you prefer to watch the show on the Forged in Ohio YouTube channel, I do ask that you make sure you're subscribed to the channel and are liking these episodes every Monday when they get released. 
Thank you all for watching or tuning in. I've been your host, Jake Murrin, and this was Forged in Ohio.